Hey guys, Flynn Holbrook here with Truck Spy. Uh, I've got John Haldy at Haldy Tech with me today, and we've got uh, some really interesting stuff to talk about. So John and I have visited a lot over the last few months about fuel and about specifically where contractors buy fuel and what they pay and, and how they could possibly optimize their fuel purchasing to increase their revenue, decrease their cost. And so we've kind of put our heads together today. We're going to record a video session. And this is really kind of an informal dump of our knowledge in a slightly structured format. Um, and look, if you're thinking about att attending the Line Hall Summit, this is an excellent sneak peek of the kind of content that you're going to get in our educational sessions at the summit. Um, so encourage you to watch this if you find this interesting. There's going to be, John, what, 20 more classes very similar to this uh, in content, maybe not necessarily format because they're not going to be on YouTube, um, but it's going to be a really exciting uh, educational experience. So I think most people know what Truck Spy is. We do your IVMRs. We also have a fuel program and we track maintenance for FedEx contractors. Um, we currently serve over 300, I think it's like 350 line haul contractors. Uh, representing somewhere in like the 7,000 truck range. Uh, John, tell us, I guess, a little bit about Haldi Tech, and thanks for uh, making time to record this with me today. No, thank you for having me. Um, we are a new software company, and uh, we'd love to have your success, but we're, we're doing our best uh, to get there. Uh, but what, what, what we take, do... It is... takes a while, John. I've been at this longer than you, so... <laughs> yeah, I'm glad to hear that, because if it happened in eight months, then I'm going to go shoot myself after this. Right. Um, no, we, uh, we focus on analyzing settlements. We're, we're data-driven, and uh, we're all about trying to help contractors make more money. And uh, we focus on helping to pay folks, uh, helping to make sure you get paid, because there's a lot of data quality issues in the FedEx settlements that people aren't aware of. And um, we, we try to give contractors the tools to figure out how to squeeze six pennies out of a nickel every week. Uh, because there's a lot of places where money can leak out of their organization, and if they're not watching it, it can really bite them in the butt. And, and look, margins are really tight. I mean, we, you know, costs continue to increase. What are we hearing? Tractors are going to go up 20%, and, and everybody knows what drivers cost now. And the reality is your margins are tightening as a FedEx contractor, and so managing your costs are super important. And, and honestly, it's my opinion, and John, I think it's your opinion, that fuel is like kind of the one big thing. It's obviously a huge expense item on your P&L, but it's really the one thing that you have some control over and that you can optimize pretty easily as a manager. Uh, you know, there's a lot of variables in hiring and routes and all these things, but you can do fuel right every single day if you manage it. And the funny thing to me is, because I have these conversations over and over again, and when you said, why don't we record this, I was delighted because this will be, give me a chance to not have to have the same conversation over and over again. Most folks' fuel is about 30 35% of their, their expense line. And there are a lot of contractors out there who think, well, there's not much I can do about it. But there is. And in a business where you're working your butt off trying to make 10% at the end of the day after depreciation and capital expenses and everything else, if you can move that needle three, four percentage points, that's a 30 or 40% improvement to your bottom line. Yeah. yeah, it's. I mean, it feels like pennies, right? But it's really not at the end of the year. It's a lot more than that. And there's a lot of contractors that have figured this out. And I think that there's a lot that, that have not. And I'm going to warn you if you're if you're watching this at this point, we're going to give you a table of contents. Um, we're going to cover some like fuel basics up front, stuff like how does IFTA work and how does the supplement get calculated. If you already know that stuff, skip ahead, because once we cover the basics, we're going to dive into kind of putting the pieces together to optimize the fuel program. And like John said, I actually show you how uh, you can save pennies slash thousands of dollars a year uh, on your fuel by both controlling the revenue side, the fuel supplement, and the cost side on what you actually spend uh, for diesel. So feel free to jump ahead. If I, I don't want you to get into this and be like, oh, these guys are telling me something that I already know. Jump forward. There's going to be a link uh, either in the footer or it's going to pop up on top of the video to show you how to do that easily. Um, so, and, and I guess the second warning I would give you is we're really going to dive into some numbers today. Uh, we're, this is 
like feel free to click pause and take a second and analyze the numbers that we're putting on the screen. Um, this is going to get fairly technical in nature, but it kind of needs to be technical in nature to give you the information that you need. So I think, John, you're going to share your screen, right? Yeah. I think let's let's do that and um, we'll, we'll, we'll dive right in. Sure. Let me just figure out how to get this done right. Do yeah. I need to... Do, are you seeing a corner of... Everything clear there? Uh, I Nothing see a correct. corner of some other window. There you Is go. it out? Now you're good. Okay. So we did want to put our contact info here to start, just so in case anybody wants to get in touch with either Flint or myself. Right. We're happy to talk more about this and get feedback and tell us if we got something wrong. But we, we've been digging through these numbers. We think we got it right. Um, but we're always willing to learn if, we, if we're off base a little bit and, or if we've missed another trick that we ought to share. Yeah, and it, gosh, if you know a trick that we're not sharing, please send us an email because we, we want to know. But be explicit if you don't want us to share it because we got a big <laughs> mouth. We'll get right back on, on right. and do this. We'll record yeah. another one. That's right. <laughs> um, so we're going to cover five topics. And I'm not going to read the slide to you, but as Flint said, we're going to start with the basics because when I have these conversations, there are some folks who just don't even know how IFTA works. But by the time we get to two, three, four, and five, we're going to get more and more complex. But each step is more info on how much money you can make. So the more you learn, the more it should impact your wallet. Yep. Flint, anything else you want to say about here? No, no, I, I think I think that uh, we got the topics again, guys. Number one and number two might be a little bit elementary, but three, four, and five is not whatsoever. So feel free to skip forward if you desire, is all I would say. Yeah, you might call number two elementary, but I, you know, FedEx doesn't make it easy. Well, that's and, true. Yeah. And following the bouncing ball is not always obvious. So there's some good stuff in there too. Good. So, Flint, do you want to explain IFTA or do you want to stick that one on me? No, I'll, I'll take IFTA. I know IFTA inside and backwards and forward. So a question that I get all the time is how does IFTA work? And so think of IFTA conceptually like, all right, this truck has, I don't know, what is it, a 240-gallon fuel tank or something? I'm just making stuff up. And if I fill up in the state of Texas, and I'm just going to use this as a random example, if I, if I buy 240 gallons in the state of Texas... I just paid the Texas and the federal excise tax on that fuel. So every time I pump fuel, I pay this, I pay this tax, and it's built into the price of the fuel, right? And so then that truck, you know, if I get, let's just call it six miles a gallon, I've got roughly a 1,400-mile range. Well, we know what's going to happen, right? That truck is going to cross the border into Oklahoma and then go into Kansas, and then he's going to head on up to the you know, whatever state, wherever his destination is. Well, I just drove miles in Texas and I just drove miles in Oklahoma. But guess what? I didn't buy fuel in Oklahoma. And so Oklahoma missed out on their little portion of my excise tax, right? I burned fuel in Oklahoma, but I didn't buy fuel in Oklahoma. So I didn't pay any tax to Oklahoma. Well, same thing true with Kansas. And so what happens is that excise tax is actually used to maintain the roadway. And so all these other states say, well, wait a second, you can't just buy fuel in Texas, which has one of the lowest fuel tax, fuel excise taxes, and then drive your miles in Oklahoma and Kansas. Like Oklahoma and Kansas want their little piece of the tax revenue, right, to maintain their roadways. So this is the point of IFTA. And IFTA stands for the International Fuel Tax Agreement. And it only applies to commercial trucks. They're not worried about IFTA in your personal car. It applies to commercial trucks. So what it actually is, is at the end of the quarter, right, there's this report that you file this sum up. And, John, you can throw some more bullets on there, I think, if you don't mind. Yeah. Um, so the tax rates vary. We, we covered that. And then quarterly, you're going to file this report, right? How many miles did you drive and how many gallons did you buy in each state? And then all this math happens to say, well, you, you know, like I just said, you pay tax in Texas, but you owe tax to Oklahoma and you owe tax to Kansas. Well, instead of a carrier having to physically write a check to Oklahoma and to Kansas and every state that you drove miles in, and then Texas sends you a refund on, on the tax that you paid there, that's a nightmare. That's how it used to work. IFTA is the organization that 
does all that math and just pays the states and refunds you. So you file your IFTA report. Every other carrier files their IFTA report. And then IFTA does the math to say, okay, Oklahoma's owed X and Kansas is owed Y. And, and you know, Flint Holbrook's trucking company gets a refund of whatever, right? So they, they do all this math. And so depending on how this works out and where you bought fuel and where you drove your miles, you will either at the end of the quarter owe additional tax to IFTA or you will get a refund of the tax that you paid at the pump from IFTA. Flint, I've worked up a few examples with numbers just to show this. Can yeah. we jump ahead to that and, and then it. folks will, will get a sense for it? Yep. This was a fictional story of one truck in one week that does 2,100 miles and is going back and forth between Ohio and Pennsylvania. Okay. Now, Ohio's got a 47 cent a gallon tax, and Pennsylvania's got a 74 cent a gallon tax. But in this example, that trucker bought everything in Ohio, 300 gallons. The trucker paid $141 in tax at the pump, right? But to your point, Pennsylvania said, hey, 800 of those 2,100 miles you drove were on our roads and you didn't buy any fuel from us. We want our piece of this. So can you see where we've got the miles driven by state there? And then the IFTA tax owed, when you allocate the miles and you do a pro rata portioning of your gallons, the IFTA tax would be $171.97. And, and what fuel economy did you assume here, John? Uh, I was assuming 300, 2100, seven miles per gallon. Yeah. And so the, what you owe, right, like what Pennsylvania's portion of this tax is, is dependent on your fleet's average fuel economy. So you actually calculate that on the IFTA return. And that's how they then allocate how many gallons equivalent do you owe in Pennsylvania versus Ohio. And so John did that math for us here. Another way of thinking about it is if you ran 2,100 miles and 40% of them were in Pennsylvania, you have to pretend like you bought 40% of your fuel in Pennsylvania. Exactly. Right. And so then they say if you bought 40 percent of your fuel and you bought a total of 300 miles, 300 gallons, how many gallons would you have bought in Pennsylvania? That's what you owe us tax on. Yep. But they'll credit you back for the Ohio tax you did pay at the pump. So just for fun, to make this very clear, I did the same scenario. But instead of buying the fuel in Ohio, what happens when you buy the fuel in Pennsylvania, right? You're like, don't do that because they have a higher tax. But notice, I'm going to show them side by side here. The IFTA tax doesn't change if you buy in Ohio or Pennsylvania. The only thing that changed is what did you pay in tax at the pump and did you overpay or underpay? So you're either going to get money from IFTA or you're going to owe them money. Does that make sense? It does. It makes it makes total sense. The tax is the same in either scenario. The only difference is where you bought fuel and how much state excise tax you paid along the way. So as a contractor, you're going to be sent from A to B and you're going to cross state lines and whatnot. As far as taxes go, it doesn't matter where you buy your fuel from a tax standpoint because they're going to look at how many gallons did you buy in total and how many miles did you drive in each state? And they're going to do the math. And you're either going to owe them or they're going to owe you, depending on where you bought your fuel. You're going to pay it now or you're going to pay it later. And a lot, I think that this is, a, you know, this is something a lot of contractors do, right? Well, I'm going to buy fuel in Ohio in this example because it appears to be 30, whatever that is, 30-some cents cheaper, right? Or 20, whatever the math is, cents cheaper. Wow, we really should cross the Ohio state line to buy our fuel. But the reality is you're going to pay it at the end of the quarter either way. You're going to pay the difference. Yep. Now, what you'll see later is because of the way FedEx does their fuel supplements, tax rates do matter, but not in the way you think they do. And we're going to get into that. Yep. I don't want to pull us down this rabbit hole, Flint, but as we were preparing for this, a thought popped into my, my mind. All of these states rely on the fuel tax for their road completion, right? All mm -hmm. construction and maintenance and everything. I was just thinking to myself, what are they going to figure out what to tax 
once electric vehicles are here in 10 or 20 years? Yeah, really, really good question. So Texas actually already has this on their IFTA form, right? Like miles and um, buy an electric vehicle. And I think that like they're trying to figure out how do you, like it's going to have to be a per mile tax, right? Not necessarily a per gallon because we can't expect trucking companies to somehow monitor how much power they use to charge vehicles and then do the gallon equivalent on energy and BTUs. Like that's not going to happen, right? So I think that this is something that they're going to have to figure out. And look, it's a big deal. As these, I mean, as these electric vehicles, like look at Tesla, right? How many Teslas are on the road? Tesla, you own a Tesla car right now, you're not paying tax at the pump. Like you're not contributing to managing the roadway, improving the roadway, but you're using the roadway just like everybody else is. So yeah, this is going to be an interesting challenge as, as EVs develop. There's a lot of things I don't trust the government to figure out how to do, but when it comes to figuring out how to tax something, I trust that they'll figure yeah, it out. They'll figure it out, right. Um, so so that's IFTA in a nutshell. That, that Just keep in mind you're going to end up paying the same thing and it's entirely based on where where you drove your miles and all the states you touch are going to get their fair share based on your percentage allocation okay so fuel supplement which is the other big component of this this is the money that you as a contractor get back from FedEx right and Flint you used to be a contractor tell me if I'm wrong on this my understanding is this was FedEx's system that they've had for a long time to deal with the fact that they're going to pay a certain base rate to run, say, 300 miles. Yep. But if you're running those 300 miles in an inexpensive fuel area and they paid the same amount to someone running in an expensive fuel area like California, that would be unfair and the California person would scream, holy hell, and the person in Missouri, for example, would be delighted because they're killing it. So they try to balance it out by looking at what you're spending on fuel. Is that a good way to explain yeah, it? Yeah, that's a good way to explain it. But I would even, I mean, I would even add to that. Uh, I mean, obviously regional differences are important, but probably the bigger reason, and fuel, sur so this is the same thing we hear, a fuel surcharge, FedEx calls it a fuel supplement. A lot of trucking companies negotiate this into their freight rates because, you know, you're signing a contract in this example, right, in this situation to haul for FedEx at a fuel price today, right? But we know fuel is like very volatile. Let's just look at the last six months or the last year, right? COVID, we, for a minute, the contract was negative in last March or March of, I guess, March of 20, April of 20. And now we're at, you know, we're up in the $3 range now. So it's very volatile. So the point of a fuel surcharge is since fuel is such a major component of your P&L, well, your revenue actually needs to increase and decrease with the cost of fuel. And so that that's really the point over the long run of the fuel surcharge. Because if you didn't do that and, and just think your rates are based on, I don't know, let's make something up, right? $2 fuel. Well, when fuel is $3.50, you're going to get crushed, right? And then when fuel is under two dollars, you're really gonna you're really gonna do do well. And so you you have to have this flex in revenue, right, to to compensate you for the additional or the decreased expense in fuel. And we're gonna talk later about miles per gallon and how that actually impacts um, because the supplement is paid on a per mile basis. So if your truck gets higher or lower fuel mileage, right, like that is a big lever on your cost. So keeping to where we started, if you look at a sample of your settlement, I just took two fuel tickets here from a sample. One ticket was bought in FedEx, a FedEx terminal in Pennsylvania. One was bought in a TA uh, in, in Connecticut. The, the thing to understand about the mechanics of how they calculate it, which is very important because people mistake this, the FedEx fuel here was bought at 344 a gallon, and the TA at 382, and that's not the comparison we're making. I just want to make sure folks understand this. Down lower in the settlement, they take your fuel tickets for that particular truck so that they can figure out what your average fuel cost was for the week. And if you bought retail fuel, you see where it says five, let's see if I've got it highlighted here, 563.67. When they do the calculation, and this is going to be very important to talk about retail fuel in your program, Flint, they don't pay you at the 563 you paid at the pump. According to the contract you have with them, 
they go to the oil price information service which is a weekly service that shows fuel prices wholesale fuel prices all across the country they downgrade what you paid at the pump to what wholesale would have cost in that zip code so when they calculate what they're going to pay you just because you paid a whole bunch more at that TA doesn't mean they're going to give you a whole bunch more. They're going to actually pretend as if you bought it at wholesale there. And let's let's clarify what wholesale is here, John, because we're going to talk about this again later. Is that is, is that cool with you? Please. Okay. So he mentioned Opus, right? So Opus is the index, and the way fuel wholesale, the way fuel distribution works, is you've got all these pipelines, and then you have what's called a rack that attaches to a pipeline that generally has storage attached to it. And this is where the 18 wheelers slash trains load fuel to then deliver to the stations. And the, the Opus price is at a rack location. So delivered to a rack is the wholesale price. And typically um, when, we, when we talk about Opus here, we're, gonna, you know, we're talking about it including the excise tax if you actually go look at the market data, it excludes the excise tax. But for, for this purpose, um, FedEx is using Opus plus tax, right, to get what they're going to pay you in that zip code. And so then zip codes actually map back to a fuel rack, right? So where would I buy fuel off the pipeline if I am delivering it to this zip code? Does that make sense, John? Yep. Yep. Cool. I didn't know most of that, um, but it does make sense. Um, so once you understand the basics of the fact that if you buy FedEx fuel, they're going to reimburse you, they're going to do your calculation off the FedEx price. If you buy retail fuel, they're going to actually reimburse you on an adjusted lower price to try to estimate what it would have been if they'd had a FedEx pump in that area. Is that fair? Yeah, and, and the, I guess the one other caveat is you can think of what they are using this in this example, the 435.12. This is not the same thing as what it costs TA to buy that fuel, right? Because truck stops can have different deals with the rack. There's also transportation. There's some additional taxes. There's other stuff that gets built into a truck stop's cost. But they're, they're using the wholesale fuel price to calculate this. So it's fair and just across the board. So once they figured out in this example that your average price was $3.13.9 per gallon, in your Schedule C, Section 5, there's a whole set of tables and 90 something percent of the fuel that they reimburse to you in the fuel supplement comes from the first table but they have for some western states and for some some triples and super heavy loads slightly higher reimbursement charts but we see that very very infrequently almost everybody's off the standard fuel mileage table but three dollars and thirteen cents is your average price for fuel for that truck for that week and if you look at this chart down here and I, I'm not sure if I animated it here, just so you can see. There's the 313 I'm talking about in the red circle there. And you go find that between 305 and 315 there in the red box, that's the reimbursement rate. And directly below it, you're going to find, find they're going to pay you 29.09 cents per mile. I know this is very nerdy, very, very complicated, but does this make sense so far? It makes sense to me. Yep. Okay. So it looks like a small number, but remember that's per mile for the whole week, right? So if you go back and look at the trips for this truck, I blurred this out because this is someone's data, but the fuel column shows you that 29.09 amount that you're getting. That's in addition to the standard mileage rate, the, 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 uh, mileage, the VMR rate and the mileage plus. This is an additional per mile amount. Okay. The higher the price goes, the more you get paid. So if you happen to be traveling in California, you're going to get paid more than you are in Texas probably. If fuel, if oil goes up $50 a barrel and we're now paying $6 at the pump, you're going to get paid more. So in many ways, this is something FedEx has done pretty well, which is to not hurt you based on the movement of, of fuel prices. Now, some people argue that fuel goes up quickly and comes down slowly, but still your reimbursement tends to stay lockstep. I know a lot of folks would, would love to say they wish that driver pay had the same sort of adjustment mechanism. That's a big hot button, probably a topic for another, another session. 
Um, so once you understand, okay, this number that came out on the reimbursement in the settlement came from that whole work through, right? Then you need to ask yourself, is it true if you buy retail fuel, you'll get a higher reimbursement rate from FedEx? I've heard this from folks. The answer is no, because as I showed you, when you buy retail fuel, they're going to knock it back to a wholesale estimate using the OPUS number and the tax. So going out there and paying more for fuel, because I've actually had a contractor say, I looked at the numbers and I actually do better going to get retail. It's not true. I looked at the numbers with him and we, he realized he had done the math wrong. When you buy retail, it's getting downgraded. So all other things being equal, buying FedEx fuel is usually your best option. Okay. Yeah, because you're, you're paying the truck stop's margin, right? Remember, FedEx calculates that fuel supplement off the market wholesale price. So that margin that you paid the truck stop to be there and be convenient and to have burritos and showers, you, you just paid that margin is one way to think about this. Mm -hmm. Yep. So as we talked about, they're going to reduce it back. Sorry, I'm jumping ahead of these bullet points. Paying a higher wholesale adjusted number means that your supplement is going to be higher. Okay. That usually means that oil prices have gone up, so you're paying more. But just choosing to pick the more expensive pump on the street, that doesn't help you at all. But it does get complicated. We're going to get to that in the next section. But we wanted to make sure that everybody understood how this fuel supplement piece works. Okay? Um, and, and by the way, Flint, do you mind as a sidebar, because we didn't put it in here, if you don't have your T-Checks card numbers in there correctly and FedEx can't calculate and do the math we just showed, yeah. they will throw their hands up and give you a big donut for fuel supplement. Yeah. And, it's, and a, it's hard to get. It's hard to get after the fact. It's hard. It's a pain in the butt. It's easy to stay ahead of it so long as you keep the T-Chex card number matched to the correct truck number. Yeah. And the horror stories, I was on the phone earlier this week with someone who's losing $4,000 a week because four trucks had the wrong card numbers in them and they didn't pay attention to it. Somebody else we talked to was never paying attention to it and they were losing, I think they ended up getting a difference check back from FedEx of 75 grand. Wow. So it's not peanuts. Yeah. Yeah. And this look, like this is administrative stuff that you can control as a business yep. owner. Make sure the right fuel card's in the right truck. And, and again, if, you, if you're not doing that, you're also on the other side, you're going to be getting a bunch of IVMR fuel exceptions, right? Because there's, you know, if you have your card swapped around, you're buying fuel that the truck's not from FedEx's perspective. Same thing with your ELD, right? Make sure your truck numbers are assigned correctly. These are all very simple administrative tasks that you have full control over. And, you know, Flint, we think we wrote some cool software, and we thought one of the easiest features we wrote was this thing that flags when you've got the wrong fuel card in there and tells you if you didn't get paid. Like That was like a layup as far as programming goes. It's probably the most popular feature in our software. <laughs> That's great. Find me money I'm owed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and it's amazing how many people step on that landmine, and, and it, yeah. it's just it's not worth it. Well, it's easy to do, right, because drivers take the card – one car doesn't work, so in an emergency, you grab one somewhere else, right? Like, it's easy to make that mistake, but you have to stay on top of it. Or you have a long-term rental, and FedEx changes the truck number yeah, on you. That's another one. And you don't update T-checks, and you're merrily driving along, and you're not getting paid for these miles. Yep. Got to help you if it's 30 cents a mile, and your team did 5,000 miles. That's 1,500 bucks on one, one screw-up Yep. Exactly. in one week. And if you don't fix it that week, it'll happen again next week. Yep. Um, so... How do you take the IFTA information and the fuel supplement information? How do I make money off this knowledge? So remember, we've got this chart which says if your average fuel price is around here, this is what you get per mile. Okay. Let's walk through an example. Flint, do you want to walk through this or do you want me to? Go, go right ahead, John. You got it. Okay. I'm going to go back to my fictional truck. Everything on the top you've already seen. This is the Ohio, Pennsylvania story. We ran 2,100 miles and we bought everything in Ohio, okay? And as we said, the fuel, can you all see my mouse? Is that visible? The, the fuel tax you're going to owe in this fictional example is $171, okay? And you're going to need to pay the additional $30.97 to true up from what you paid at the pump. All that we've seen. 
because of the fuel costs, and we're going to assume this was all bought at FedEx terminals, so there's no adjustment, okay? Because of the tax, which is based in, baked into the number that they reimburse you on, the average fuel cost in this example was $3.47 a gallon. The fuel supplement, according to Schedule C, is $0.35 cents and change. So for this one truck, 2,100 miles in one week, you should expect to get a check from FedEx baked into your settlement for $741, okay? And, and remember, let's, let me just replay, John, what you just said for clarity. I bought all of my fuel in the state of Ohio, which means that the price in Ohio goes back to that fuel supplement table, right? To my average opus in Ohio where I bought fuel goes back. We get our fuel supplement number, which is this 35 and some change cents a gallon, right? And remember the Ohio tax is baked into that value used to reference back to this fuel supplement table because that's included in the in their wholesale price calculation right so that's how we're getting to that fuel supplement and then john is multiplying that 35 and some change cents per mile times the 2100 miles that the truck ran to get the 741.93 so i think we all can agree though that 347 at the pump looks better than 374 at the pump right but now let's flip it and let's do the same experiment. We buy all our fuel in Pennsylvania for this same fictional truck, okay? The tax we've talked about, let's see if I can figure out how to do this. The tax is still the same number, right? But we have a higher pr average price because the price, the tax per gallon from Pennsylvania is higher, okay? We've bought 300 gallons, we've run 2,100 miles, our IFTA tax is the same. But because our average price here is three seventy four a gallon, we're entitled to a higher fuel supplement from FedEx. So we end up getting eight hundred and seven dollars back. If the tax is the same, the 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 fuel cost base fuel cost was three dollars a gallon. We added the tax. So let's compare this side by side, okay? We did the same miles, we bought the same amount of fuel, we had the same base fuel cost before tax. But by buying in Pennsylvania, which seems more expensive, we actually ended up with about $66 more in our pocket that week. Totally counterintuitive, right? I went through that fast, Flint. Did that make any sense yeah, to you? Yeah, makes, it makes total sense. And then, you know, $66 doesn't feel like a lot, but if this is a dedicated run, multiply that times weeks in a year, and all of a sudden you're, you're talking real, real bottom line, and you don't have to do anything different to get this, right? The truck's getting the same fuel economy. You're running the same route. You're paying the same IFTA. You're just going to buy fuel in Pennsylvania versus Ohio. And... Okay, so let's see, 807 minus 741, 66 bucks on 300 gallons, right? That's 22 cents a gallon. Wouldn't you want your driver going somewhere to get it at 22 cents a gallon cheaper? Yeah, and then, and then divide that 22 cents a gallon by, you know, what, what, what did we say, seven miles a gallon? That's three cents a mile additional bottom line that you're getting by just buying fuel in Pennsylvania versus Ohio. Yep, yep. And, and the thing that's nuts about it is, in this example about, what happens is FedEx is paying the supplement with IFTA tax included. So when you have a higher fuel tax state nearby, you have these opportunities if you're smart about where you buy fuel, and we're gonna show some data on this in a moment, but you have an opportunity to actually get reimbursed more and yet you're not going to pay more tax because, as we've shown, IFTA is totally based on where you drove. It's not based on where you bought the gas. But the fuel supplement's based on where you bought the gas because it bakes in the tax. Yep. So even though in this example, 74, 374 versus 347, but somehow Pennsylvania is 22 cents cheaper at the end of the day Completely for you. Completely counterintuitive. So... I ran some numbers. I took a whole bunch of fuel tickets for December, Flint. Yep. 
On the top is comparison of four states, and we had about 700 fill-ups. I can't remember how many gallons. Four states in December, and these are just the FedEx on the top. The cheapest by far is the Pennsylvania fuel, right? Is and let's, can, let's understand, John. So, so walk me through. This is average... I'm sorry. Yeah, let me let me let let me step back. This was the average price paid at the pump in these four states for all the fill-ups. Okay, and so the most expensive was Pennsylvania at three thirty-two a gallon. Okay, but then we did to the to that math in the spreadsheet behind this what we just walked through, which is take the tax out because the tax doesn't matter. You're going to pay the tax based on where you drive, right? And then we said. Also subtract from that what you're going to get paid from FedEx based on what the wholesale cost was. And the weird thing was, the, this adjusted number that we're talking about here, this is when you take the pump price, reverse it to wholesale, and then take the tax out and then subtract out the, the supplement, that's your actual out-of-pocket cost as a contractor. So, okay? so the right column is effective price per gallon. Yeah, uh, great term for it. Uh, we internally have been calling it a fuel score, okay. and you want as low a fuel score as you want, but it's what's actually coming out of your pocket at the end of the day for the fuel. Right, and then this is the same thing. You have to, you have to assume some amount of fuel economy to get to this number, right? And so in the real world, a fleet's fuel economy may be higher or lower, and I'm sure we've used an average here, right? So you kind of have to repeat these calculations for your fleet to determine what your effective price per gallon is, right, John? Yes, but I will tell you this, and, and jumping ahead, we did the math on this table that FedEx gives you. They're assuming you're getting 6.4 and change a gallon, miles per gallon. Okay. okay. That's their math. Okay. So when we're doing these numbers, we're assuming you're getting 6.41 miles per gallon right here in this example. So if they are, and I, and I don't want to get on a sidebar here, John, but this thought just occurred to me. If they are assuming 6.41 miles per gallon on the fuel surcharge sheet, on the, the whatever we're calling this, right? And, and if, I, if my fleet is getting more than 6.4, whatever it is, miles per gallon, then I want fuel to keep going up because the higher fuel goes up, the more of that little difference I'm getting because I'm getting more fuel surcharge on an effective per mile basis than my trucks are actually burning, right? And if my trucks on average get less than 6.4, I probably need to go get some new trucks, but, but higher fuel actually hits your bottom line and costs you more money, correct? Um, yes, yes. Now, we obviously can't control the price of fuel, right? unless someone's got a line to the Middle East or, or legislation for fracking. But we're also going to talk about how big that impact is and what you can do in terms of truck maintenance, the vintage of your fleet, you know, the efficiency overall, things yeah. you can control. Because you'll see it, it, it's a pretty dramatic number how this plays out when, yeah. you, when you work the numbers. Good. And I know, I know we're getting there, but, but that's, one, that's one way to think about this. Okay, so we've got, our, we've got our effective price per gallon or our fuel score and I think what we're seeing here is that in this example, you're better to buy in Pennsylvania, right? In both of these scenarios, whether you're buying at the FedEx yard or you're buying retail. That's the counterintuitive thing, because if you look at this chart, Ohio has the best looking pump price, right? But at the end of the day, what's coming out of your pocket in Ohio is 76.7 cents a gallon. And if you buy the the Pennsylvania fuel at three thirty three on the pump price, you're actually only paying fifty cents a gallon. It's sure. totally counterintuitive. That's on FedEx fuel, and as we're about to see, though, what we just talked about there with with the forty nine cents, the same thing happens with retail. Okay, we ran the same numbers. Look at the retail prices. Okay. They're all kind of the same, but once again, Ohio looks like it has the best price, right? Out of these four, 368 is better than 386, 383, and 389, right? Yep. I'll stop there in Ohio. But at the end of the day, buying that fuel retail in Ohio on this sample, 
actually costs out of pocket a dollar eighteen versus the Pennsylvania, which is the most expensive, only costs ninety seven cents a gallon after you adjust for these things. Very interesting. And and I think the other thing reading between the lines on this table, we're getting a feel here, right, John, for retail margins. Uh-huh. And I know you've got some stuff to show us here. We're in a gonna minute, dive so. into retail margins in a minute. Yeah. I, if you'll humor me, it gets really strange because as you look at more and more of the data, this one just caught my eye. We weren't looking for one of these, but buying retail in Pennsylvania, you get such a better reimbursement rate from FedEx because of the 74 cents a gallon that it's almost as good at the end of the day as buying FedEx wholesale in New York. That's interesting. And I bet you if we dug for it, we'd find some cases where buying retail in some states is better than FedEx wholesale in other states. Yeah, especially once we talk about getting some discounts from retail. Because I bet if we apply discounts to that price in Pennsylvania, I bet you're way better to buy in Pennsylvania than at FedEx in New York. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. And the, the other thing that I wanted to share... We talk to some folks who do a lot of solo work and they're in terminals with FedEx fuel. And we see numbers like 90, 92, 95% FedEx fuel purchases and they're doing great on their fuel spend. But folks with teams, you're not going to be able to buy FedEx fuel. If you're doing solo over the road, it's hard to buy FedEx fuel unless you have a, a fuel pump at your home domicile or you're going there every day. Um, and so there's a lot of folks who are doing great on buying FedEx fuel, and they're only getting 50% FedEx fuel or 40% FedEx fuel. And what you're going to show us, I think, is super important that if you're buying any retail fuel, you should have two, two, two cards in the truck. You should have a third-party fuel program like yours, and you should have the T-Checks one. Yep. Get FedEx when you can, but otherwise, don't just pay regular with the T-Checks card at a retail pump. Yeah, and you'll even see in some situations... Um, there are discrepancies, and we're going to get into this, but sometimes you're actually better to buy retail, believe it or not. Um, oftentimes not by a lot, but you guys know how, how difficult it is sometimes to get in and out of the FedEx pumps. you got to drop your trailer. you got to wait in line. When you combine all those factors with, hey, it's about the same price, sometimes you're better to actually just go through retail. So FedEx, Flint, this is stuff you've been teaching me a lot about. Do you mind taking over here? Yeah, yeah, I'd love to. So kind of the fourth topic is how do I get a better deal on my retail fuel? So we all have these T-check cards and these T-check cards come with some discounts. And John, tell tell me where, because you provided me with this data. So where did you get this, this information or how did so, you build it? So we have a lot of fuel records and every now and then some things jump out at us and we notice that Sap Brothers, which doesn't have a lot of locations and they're only in a small geographic area, they were putting out numbers at the pump that were ridiculous when people were using the T-Checks card. And we tried to figure out what it was and we determined that T-Checks had a contract with Sap Brothers. And I mean, it's pennies above wholesale above the, the nearest FedEx thing. So if there are these these little noticed things that you can do with T-checks. Kangaroo, six cents above wholesale. Um, the problem is, for whatever reason, T-checks goes and negotiates these discounts, and you cannot, anywhere that we're able to find, find anything that says where. We did see on a website one time this little snippet, which we screenshotted. And we were all excited, and we tried to get more information. And after we inquired about more information, they took it off the website. <laughs> That's funny. So there are probably some good deals out there, but unless you stumble on them, they're really hard to find. And so, and so just to clarify, John, that table on the left, you're calculating what you think based on the transactions that you're seeing on the T-check card since that you're paying above wholesale. This was a simple math where we said this is what they paid at the pump at the pump, and this is what FedEx downgraded it to for Got reimbursement. It. Yep. And it was like two cents apart. Got it. In fact, we even saw a couple negatives from Sap Brothers because the Opus number was higher than what Sap Brothers charged. Interesting. But again, 
I dare you to try to find out where the deals are from from T checks. Yeah. It's like they cut them with the vendors, and then they don't want to tell you. Right, and I know that there that there's some discount at uh, Pilot Flying J, and I I don't remember what the number is. I think it's ten or eleven cents, and I also think that there's a small discount at Loves as well on the T check card, right? Right, ten, eleven cents seems to be what they get, but every now and then they have a small vendor where they're getting like forty or fifty cents. Yeah, very interesting. Cool. So, one, I mean, one thing you can do is use the T check card and try to buy at the right place. And like John said, interesting, cool. It's a third party card, and we we actually have one. Um, we went out, I went out and negotiated um, some fuel pricing at major with major truck stops to benefit our customers because we took all of our customers and said, okay, if we're a fleet of seven, 8,000 trucks, what can we negotiate as one big fleet? And so before we actually dive into that table and the numbers, so a few things to know about third-party cards. For the most part, they're not gonna work on the FedEx yard unless they are T-Check, actually T-Check cards, which T-Check is slowly going away. They've been bought by EFS, it's old technology. They are attempting to do away with T-Check altogether and move to EFS infrastructure. So the card will not work on the FedEx yard. So if you use a third party card, you gotta have two cards. You gotta have a T-Check card for your on yard purchases and the third party card for your retail purchases. Uh, in our case, our transactions are automatically synced back to FedEx to calculate your fuel supplement. Um, and then this is your card. Like you can do cash advances, you can change your truck numbers, you can you know, set rules, this driver can't use this card, et cetera. You can buy tires, you can do oil changes, all this stuff, you have full control over your fuel card. Uh, you don't have to call somebody to update a truck number. Um, and then the other interesting thing is the, what you spend doesn't actually come off your settlement. Uh, you get ACH arrangement once a week. So uh, EFS Wex Bank will float you a week's worth of fuel and then they're gonna ACH you for it the next week it's kind of mechanically how it works all right so i talked about discounts so let's let's look at discounts i took the top six states for volume in the fedex system so if we look at retail volume where are contractors buying fuel these six states are the uh have the most volume so let's just let's just dive into the numbers on the truck spy fuel program and this is the week uh, of 110 so um monday was the 10th so it's that it's that week um, the best price on the trucks by fuel card in Texas was $2.99 a gallon for diesel. And if we look at what does that represent um, a, as a discount from the average major price. So let's define that. The average major is Love's, Pilot Flying J, and TA. If we look at all their prices in Texas and we take an average, had you bought at the best price of $2.99, you would have on average saved $0.65 cents from what's on the sign at the major truck stops, right? And then if we look at the average price on the truck spy program, and I'm just looking at Texas here, is 340 a gallon. And so then the discount from the average major price was 23 and some change cents per gallon, right? And Texas is one of the tightest margin states for fuel because it's on the Gulf Coast. It has refineries, it has transportation, uh, it, it moves a lot of volume and fuel because there's a lot of economy in Texas. There's a lot of trucks. And so it actually has the tightest retail margins. We're going to get there or some of the tightest we're going to get there in a minute. And then if you like look at Pennsylvania, you start to see, you start to kind of see a similar picture, right? Our best price versus the average um, truck stop price, you know, we're 40 to 60 cents a gallon discount. And our average price on the program versus the average retail price you're kind of in the 30, 40 cents a gallon. Illinois is a little bit weird uh, because there's actually not that many uh, places to get fuel in Illinois that are on our program. So the average is a little bit lower. But if you look at this data, um, you can actually save a whole lot more money using a third party fuel card than you will with the T-Check card. John, am I is that a, a fair, solid assumption? It, it does, and if you could dumb it down for me with this fictional example, let's say I'm somewhere and I can buy at the yard for three bucks, and the pilot down the road is showing three fifty six a gallon. Okay, I know with my T checks card, if my guy goes there, I'm probably going to get ten to twelve cents off that. So call it three forty five a gallon. Yep. What would I expect to pay with your program? 
So, yeah, that's a really good question. So with Pilot and Loves, you're, you're going to be better to use the T-Check card because we don't have very deep negotiated discounts at Pilot, Flying J, and Loves. We have really good negotiated discounts at TA. You can expect to save um, quite a, it depends on the region, but you can expect to save these numbers roughly that are on the screen right now at a TA. You can also expect to see that at Ambest. You can expect to see it at Casey's. You can see it at Speedway. You can see it at this huge list of truck stops that are not Pilot Flying J and Loves. So, and I know you don't have exact numbers, but to give a sense of it, if FedEx yard fuel is three bucks and the TA down the street is three fifty, what would you think the price might be? Um, it's it's going to vary, but I'm going to estimate that we are. 10 to 14 cents more than the FedEx yard price. Oh, so like 310, 315 yeah. in that ballpark. That, that would, and it, it's going to depend on the market and all of this stuff. But as a rough rule of thumb, that's what, I, that's what I would say. Roughly 10 to 15 cents difference. Are you working on, I think you are working on tools on your side to help people make sense of this because it's all great to talk about it, but how do you know when the driver is going to get fuel? Yeah, definitely. So once you sign up, and you have an account on our fuel card, you get in your trucks by account, you get this giant map and we map every location that accepts that card and the price that you're going to pay, or at least the approximate price, we get a, we get a dump every morning of what the price at every truck stop is going to be. Now, if they do a midday price change, sometimes we can't capture that, but generally those price changes are very small. It's like two cents up or two cents down. Um, and so, yes, you get full price transparency and you can then filter that down and say, you know, I want to see locations within 25 miles of St. Louis or just as an example. And we will then filter and sort that to show you the best price that you can get within 25 miles of anywhere, right? Or 50 miles or 100 miles or whatever you want to use. Now, we are in the process of building a route app optimizer where you would say my truck is in Dallas and he has... 500 miles of range, and he is going to, I don't know, make something up, Rialto, California, where should he get fuel along that route? So we are, we're a couple of weeks away from launching that right now. Um, and then the third tool we're working on is an actual mobile application that the driver has access to that gives him turn-by-turn -turn navigation. So the same premise applies. I'm in Dallas, I'm navigating with truck-appropriate length, width, height restrictions, weight restrictions in place on the turn-by-turn. -turn. If I'm in Dallas and I'm going to Rialto, where should I buy fuel along that route? Sweet. Yeah. So we got a lot in the pipe. Um, really, really fun stuff, actually, on our end. We're having a lot of fun building these tools. So, um, And then I think, I think what would be interesting is next we can look at you know, we, we already talked about that effective price per gallon, right, John? So if you use a third-party card like us and you use, you actually buy fuel where we have negotiated discounts and we'll give you reports, right, that tell you um, your driver bought at Pilot, you would have been better to buy a TA, for example. And if you actually act on that data and affect behavior change, what does that make your effective price per gallon? So I think that that's on our next slide. If you'll advance us here, John. Yeah. Is this the slide? Uh, yes. So I did the same math here that John had on his effective price per gallon, retail versus FedEx, but I did it for chains in these top six volume states. So if we look at that effective price per gallon, and this would have been the week of 110, so I just did a week's worth of data. This is just a little snapshot. Um, here's, what, here's what your effective price per gallon would have been if you bought FedEx fuel right, versus you bought retail fuel at Loves, versus you bought retail fuel at Flying J, versus you bought our average fuel price or our best fuel price on the program in each state. So what you can see is Loves on average is going to cost you 30 some cents more than FedEx, Flying J roughly 40 cents more, at least in Texas, than FedEx. We're going to be, like I said, 10, 15 cents more than FedEx on average, but then our best price actually is lower than the effective price per gallon at FedEx. And that's for, that's for a few few reasons. One, we're talking averages here. So 
in a big state like Texas, you know, it's a big state. So there's a lot of prices in that average. So we might not fully be comparing apples to apples because our best price, for example, might be right next to a refinery down in Houston. And the average includes a lot of stuff in Dallas and Amarillo and Waco and other places, right? So this isn't necessarily a pure apples to apples comparison, but it gives you an idea of what's possible on the third party fuel card and what you can expect. And this story holds true for all six of these top states and every state that we ran analysis on, right? If you actually are buying at the best price in the state, you can actually beat the effective price per gallon at FedEx. Um, I, I think it's spectacular. It, it, it would surprise me if it was a big number when you beat it, when you're actually comparing apples to apples. Yeah, it would. And, and, and I would also say that sometimes there's oddities in price that we see out there at, at truck stops. Like the market may have moved up, but the truck stop has not repriced. Right. Mm -hmm. And so we see that we see that there was an example in Hutchins, Texas, a few weeks ago. There was a random Exxon station that was selling fuel at 25 cents less than the FedEx yard price. Right now, it, it wasn't like it would have been inconvenient to take my truck and leave FedEx and drive eight miles to the Exxon. But I would have saved quite a bit of money had I done it. Now, since and that was it took about 10 days and then that Exxon repriced. Right. And then all of a sudden they were more than FedEx. So you see some oddities in the data sometimes that you can take advantage of. And then you even see some chains that are willing to take a loss on the fuel because they're yeah. making their money on the convenience store. Absolutely. And we and we do see that. We do see that from time to time. Um, you know, as a as a general rule of thumb, and, and John, John, you already like asked the right question. If you look at that average column, you know, you're seeing 10 to 15 cents uh, average price per gallon difference first FedEx here. And you think about buying 10,000 gallons a week. If you can save 25 yeah. cents, it's real money. It's, it is. It's real money. And it's significantly cheaper than what you see in the Loves and Flying J retail columns here. I will tell you, because I look at this all the time and I talk to folks, if you're using the T-Chex card to buy retail, you need to be looking really carefully at a program like yours, Flint, because there might be significant savings simply by having a second card in the truck. Yep. Yeah. And, and you have to do, you know, I would add to that. You, it's not as simple as just having a second card in the truck. You also need to do some behavior management with your drivers, because if you just throw our fuel card in the truck, but your driver still goes and buys fuel it loves, it's going to work out roughly the same, right? Like, you're not going to save very much. You've got it, you, and, and the card, you could turn off loves, you could turn off Flying J, right? But you kind of have to get your driver on um, incentivized and understanding that, hey, we buy fuel at TA, or we buy fuel here, or we buy fuel there, right? The most, and we optimize that price. I know, but I talked to someone who said that they were struggling with getting this across, and then someone in their, their, their office figured out a really elegant solution. They grabbed the T-Chex cards and the, the other cards, they took out a Sharpie, and they wrote, use at FedEx, <laughs> use at Pilot, use at Loves, and on the other one they wrote, use elsewhere, yep. and the guys were able to figure that one out. So it doesn't have to be that complicated. Right. Yeah, exactly. Exactly right. Um, do you have another slide? here? I, I don't remember, John, to be honest with you. <laughs> yes, I do. Average retail margins. So we visited just a little bit about retail margins. We've seen margins expand a lot as fuel kind of post COVID world, or I hope hopefully post COVID world, as fuel prices have climbed, we've also seen retail margins climb. So I did the same analysis week of 110, 22, and we can look at the average retail margins across the major. So again, this is TA, Flying Jane loves um, what's on their sign versus what their wholesale plus transportation plus tax is. So that's how they define their cost. And so we're seeing really big margins. And if we sort this descending, which is how it's sorted here, uh, Idaho had the, had the largest margin, followed by Arizona and then West Virginia. And so you can see there's, I mean, truck stops are making a lot of money. This is per gallon. Right. So when you go in there and buy 200 gallons of fuel at a 60 cent margin, the truck stop just got 120 bucks from you. Right. So if you're paying retail, you're really leaving a lot on the table 
because the truck stop has these really high margins. It's no wonder they're giving away free showers. Yeah, of course. Yeah, hell, take 10 free Subway sandwiches, right? Like, they, I mean, they, no wonder these driver rewards programs are so rich. Every time you go fill up, they make 100 bucks. I, it kills me to think a driver gets a free free 40-ounce soda and a sandwich, saves 6 bucks, and costs the company another 80 bucks because they could have gone to the terminal. Yep, exactly right. And then I would also add on our on our fuel program, the driver rewards are unmodified. So whatever the chain offers for driver rewards, your drivers can take advantage of. We get that question all the time. Um, so we just, if we buy fuel at the right place, get the rewards, save the money, it's a win-win. Uh, I've heard from other folks that if you tell guys you're taking away the points, if you have to, and you tell them we'll give you six cents a, a gallon instead, yep. they're like, oh, cash? Okay. Sounds good. Exactly. Um, so, Flint, I know, I know we're pushing the time that we had talked about. Can we talk just a little bit through some numbers? Because I really wanted to share this about what yeah, happened. I think as, we as, should. And I've, I've, I've got plenty of time, John. So This is the sort of icing on the cupcake for all the stuff we've talked about which a lot of people haven't put it all together about how fuel supplements and IFTA rates and everything else play into this thing. But there's an opportunity for contractors to really improve their margin based on fuel economy. If you recall, we've got this, this table and FedEx is assuming you're getting about 6.4 miles per gallon, right? So when they pay you per mile, They've done these rates on that assumption of 6.4 miles per gallon, okay? I wanted to show what happens with the math if in the middle column, this is the 6.41 miles per gallon fictional truck, and everything else is the same here. Three different trucks. One's getting 5.5, one's getting the FedEx expected 6.4, then you have another truck getting 7.5, okay? Each truck does 2,100 miles, which we know from our data that's about the average utilization of a solo truck in one week. Okay. Take the fuel efficiency. How many gallons does it take to run those miles? This is just straight Excel work, okay, based on the numbers we have here. What are you getting paid fuel supplement per mile if we're always buying the same fuel in these fictional trucks? This is the same, okay? This doesn't change because you're buying fuel at the same price. Remember, they're not giving you the supplement per gallon, it's per mile. That's the magic in this, okay? This is the total amount of fuel supplement you're going to get running those regardless of your fuel efficiency. It doesn't change. Again, all three fictional trucks bought gas at the same price, okay? But because we had to buy more gallons, the fuel cost on the, on the crappier truck was much higher than the fuel cost on the more efficient truck, okay? So when you look at your fuel cost and you subtract out what you got paid, if our baseline is this imaginary truck that FedEx is assuming does 6.4 miles per gallon, over the course of a year, a solo truck that's only getting 5.5 miles per gallon is costing you as an owner an additional $9,700 in fuel costs in this example. But if you can get 7.5 miles per gallon, you're actually doing better to the tune of 8600 bucks. So I know that there are some contractors out there who believe in, ah, I just pay the additional re repair costs. Yeah, I know it's more, but I don't think they're understanding how the math impacts them on the mile, on the fuel efficiency yeah. and what it does to their expense line. Yeah, this is, I think, in my opinion, this is the biggest lever uh, when it comes to managing fuel and cost and expenses is the truck buying decision and can you get into trucks that get seven and a half and we and i i hear contractors getting eight eight and a half miles a gallon all the time um if you're not there like you really need to start thinking about how do how do we get there and john mentioned maintenance a lot of people say oh i know it's maintenance is going to be more but it's sure cheaper than buying a new truck but it's actually not it's way more expensive than buying new efficient trucks because with a new truck you get rid of maintenance all you pay is interest, right? You've got this interest expense. Maintenance is, for the most part, going to be under warranty. 
And then you're going to save $9,000 a year in this example. This is just a solo truck on fuel, right? So, I mean, I, I can think of very few scenarios where it makes sense to buy older, less efficient equipment. And you mentioned this is solo. I went ahead and did the numbers for our conversation, Flint. This is what it is with a team truck getting 4,500 miles a, a, a week. Ooh, $20,000 a year. That's that's like, what? what is, I mean, let's do the math, right? Roughly a truck payment on a new truck at 140 grand, five-year note. You're going to be at 30 some hundred, right? Like you're halfway here in fuel savings to making that truck payment, not just the interest, the entire payment, the interest and the AMWORD. And I think the issue becomes when you are paying, making truck payments, you see those every month and everybody goes, ouch, ouch, ouch. What you don't see is how it's quietly affecting your bottom line unless you're really looking at these numbers and understanding what you're keeping at the end of the day. Yep, I think you're right. So I, I know that that was a little bit of a detour at the end, but I'm passionate about trying to see folks keep as much as they can when they work this hard and contractors work their butts off. And I have nothing against FedEx. I think they're a great company, but they're a Fortune 500 company. And I, th I hate it when I see contractors losing tens of thousands of dollars a year that they shouldn't be losing and in many cases with fuel supplements and things like that, they're literally giving it to a Fortune 500 company. And I can think of a lot better charities out there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, look, I mean, I, 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 I could not agree more. Like, you work way too hard. Um, and it's hard work, right? Like, this isn't necessarily an easy business. And this, some of these numbers aren't that intuitive. Like, you really have to think about it. But you're leaving a lot of money on the table, and you work way too hard for that. So, um We've, I think we've given some pretty good tips today, John, on fuel and things that you can do. to. And it feels like such small improvements, but when you multiply that across a year or five years, it's actually real money. Um, Flint, before we go, I want to reiterate something you said earlier. This is the kind of conversations that we're hoping to have on a large scale in Dallas in July. And, and I know we at Haldi Tech have been delighted to work with Truck Spy on trying to make that a reality. And we're hoping that, you know, there's going to be dozens of these conversations with other speakers, other panelists on lots of topics. And uh, if you think this was a useful conversation and you learned something, you really should be in Dallas um, because I think we're going to be doing it on a large scale there. Yeah, it's going to be the largest group of line haul contractors ever assembled. We're Our team's working really hard to build this educational content. Um, we're going to put a link down below this video on YouTube. You can register for the show there. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. We're, we're very excited about it as organizers, so we hope you are too. And I don't want to speak for you, Flint, but I'm certainly delighted if you were to invite me to do another conversation on any other topics. If yep. folks have feedback on things they'd like to hear us talk about, please let us know. Uh, I'm sure you're going to put a link in there. And our emails are here. We'd love to hear from yeah, you. We, we really would. I'll echo that. If you've got ideas of stuff that you're scratching your head on in your business um, and you think that it's something that we could dive into and figure out, we would, we're happy to, this takes us no time, an hour, an hour, right, John, an hour and a half to prep and plan and do one of these sessions. Um, and we, it's a lot of fun. So if you've got an idea, email it to us. Flint, thanks so much for having me today. It's been a blast. Yeah, it has been, John. Thank you for joining me. And uh, I'm looking forward to the next one. We don't know what we're going to talk about yet, but I think we're going to get some ideas. Super. Cool. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a great day.